in the previous videos we talked about genetic code and how those 64 codes were obtained and the scientists who contributed in that code and we also talked about the salient features of the code now in this uh, particular section we are talking of the process of translation and translation means the information which has come from DNA in the form of mRNA is actually getting translated for protein synthesis so we are now talking of the translation of the codes which are on mRNA into the actual proteins so this process is translation this process gets completed in various steps first step is activation of amino acids just to have an overview what exactly is going to happen in this entire process amino acids have to join to form the protein molecules these amino acids are all around in the cytoplasm they need to get activated first then tRNA is going to read the codon mRNA using its anti-codon arm and will bring those tRNAs to the ribosome the two subunits of ribosomes are going to assemble and that's when the protein synthesis is going to take place so first step that we are talking about is activation of amino acids these amino acids they get activated and for that ATP that is adenosine triphosphate the energy currency is required and an enzyme is also required for this the enzyme is known as amino acyl synthetase amino acyl synthetase and this enzyme is going to help in this activation process if we just simply write the reaction it's going to be amino acid plus ATP the energy currency and for enzyme let us write E so we get an activated amino acid which is known as amino acyl and amino acyl is nothing but an activated amino acid and the enzyme was called amino acyl synthetase we write this complex the activated amino acid as amino acid AMP enzyme complex this complex is termed as amino acyl or which is actually activated amino acid so we write it as amino acid AMP and enzyme we know in ATP there are three phosphates and now here are only monophosphates in this molecule that means inorganic phosphates are released one exception which takes place in this process of activation is in case of methionine methionine is the first we talked of start codon that is AUG it codes for methionine and methionine because it is the start codon whenever protein is synthesized the first amino acid which is going to come is always methionine so methionine is activated again in a similar manner but the activated methionine is known as f met it is formulated methionine so all other amino acids activated or after activation will be written as amino acid amp enzyme complex or it can be termed as amino acyl but if it is the first amino acid which is always methionine they rarely they can be valine also then its activation process is pretty much same but activated methionine is known as f met because this is the first one it is given a special name and its activation is written separately and because it is the first it also gets one advantage which we will discuss in step number three so amino acids have been activated 
all amino acids get activated in same way except for the first one that is methionine so this is our step number one now this amino acid activated amino acid has to be brought by tRNA so let us talk about step number two now after activation step number two is transfer of that activated amino acid on tRNA so we need to transfer it transfer activated amino acid to tRNA the activated amino acid was written as amino acyl AMP enzyme complex this is how we wrote the activated one and now this needs to be transferred on tRNA if you are able to recall the structure of tRNA we said the tRNA has a clover leaf like structure there are three such loops or arms and one end is the third end the other end is the fifth end third end is little longer or extended beyond the fifth one the third end has OH or the functional group and while discussing this structure we said this is the anti codon arm and this end is the place where amino acid is going to bind so we wrote this as amino acid binding site so when we say amino acid needs to be transferred on tRNA what is going to happen is at this OH will come this amino acid so after this reaction takes place what is going to happen is this amino acyl that is activated one has gone with tRNA so now amino acid activated is on tRNA so now we have amino acid tRNA complex AMP molecule will be set free and this enzyme that is our amino acyl synthetase is also set free by this step our activated amino acid is now attached to this tRNA and the role of tRNA is to transfer that amino acid to the site of protein synthesis we will come to th third step that is now the process of protein synthesis so first one was activation where amino acids get activated second one that activated amino acid needs to be transferred on the tRNA and now this tRNA is going to take it to the site step number three is the protein synthesis so let us talk about step number three now so third step is the actual protein synthesis this process of protein synthesis of this step can be understood in stages so let us take stage by stage what is happening the first thing which has to happen for this protein synthesis to begin after activation and transfer and everything the two ribosomal subunits must assemble so assembly of the ribosomal subunits ribosomal subunits we know that there are two types of ribosomes the 70s and 80s which are the most common ones and each ribosome has a smaller subunit this is not the right way the structure looks but this is the way we are going to draw it while understanding the process of translation so this is the smaller subunit and the larger one we will draw like this larger subunit the detailed structure of ribosome we study when we talk of cell and different organelle of cell so we know the basic structure of this here we are just trying to understand it smaller subunit has mRNA binding site the place where mRNA is going to come and bind the larger subunit has 
three sides. It has three sides. We will name those three sides. The three sides are called A side, B side and E side. A stands for amino acyl site. Amino acyl site. What exactly the role of the site is, is to receive the amino acid. The amino acid which is now on the tRNA will be received here, the activated one. Except the first one. We'll come to that in a minute. P stands for or P site is for peptide bond formation. So it is known as peptidal site. Here the peptide bond formation takes place. And E is known as the exit site. This is the place from where the tRNA is going to exit or leave. So larger subunit has these three sites. M RNA is attached to the smaller subunit. If this ribosome is attached to endoplasmic reticulum, then it is always the larger subunit which is attached to the ER with the help of a protein called riboforin. That is again in the cytology part. These two subunits assemble only when the protein synthesis has to take place. That means these two subunits would assemble and we would get the ribosome structure, complete ribosome, the smaller and the larger unit together. This process is known as assembly. Assembly of ribosomes. And for this assembly of ribosomes, magnesium ions are required. If magnesium ions are not present in the prescribed concentration, then these two subunits will not assemble. And if magnesium ion is less, they separate. If it is right amount, they assemble. If it is more than required, then dimer formation takes place. Now, this is step number one, that is assembly of the ribosomes. Step number one in protein synthesis. The second one is attachment of mRNA. So if this is our ribosome, this is, second step is attachment of mRNA. And we just now said that the mRNA is attached to the smaller subunit. So if this is our ribosome, mRNA is going to come and attach on the smaller subunit. So now after this, this becomes site A. B and E. Uh, now mRNA, first two subunits have associated or assembled, then mRNA which was synthesized by the process of transcription comes and binds here and now the process actually starts. So that is the third part in the protein synthesis. First assembly of ribosomes we have seen what is on which subunit. Smaller subunit has the mRNA binding site. Larger subunit has these three sites. That is A, amino acyl site, P, where the peptide bond formation takes place and E is the exit site from where this tRNA is going to escape or leave. After that, the mRNA comes and binds and now the tRNA is going to bring the amino acid. That is step number two.